was a Pentecost Sunday back in 1967 when here in Liverpool, Roman Catholics celebrated as they consecrated a brand new cathedral. It was the end of a story that actually stretched back over 100 years when the decision was first made to build a cathedral for the city's growing Catholic population. A story of frustrated ambition. But when the doors of the cathedral were finally opened, it captured the mood of the age. We hear from the man who oversaw the construction of this iconic building. I don't think in the whole of my life I've experienced anything as profound as what happened then. And from two of the cathedral's young parishioners as they prepared to make their first communion. You want to look really special on your big special day of being closer to God. We've music to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. And I'm on the trail of John Wesley, the founder of Methodism. The story of the cathedral we see today began in 1930 with the purchase of the site of Liverpool's old workhouse. Three years later, the foundation stone was laid in a grand ceremony for which our first hymn was specially composed. with increasing pride the growth of the great new Liverpool Cathedral, which will one day rival the largest and most beautiful in Europe. But after the outbreak of war, construction work was stopped and spiralling costs meant all grand plans had to be abandoned. Instead, Liverpool looked to build a cathedral that reflected the new post-war era. This famous cathedral is the result of a competition launched in 1959. The winning design of almost 300 entries sent in from around the world. Among the congregation on the day of the consecration in 1967 was Philip Harrison. For him, it was the culmination of five years overseeing the construction of the winning design. Working here was, was extremely exciting. Um, the, the, this design proved a construction challenge, not least. I remember being right at the top of the lantern on the outside, and this was in the days before health and safety had, had been invented. You're walking on scaffolding tubes and holding the one above you just for, to hang on. 
It was a bit hairy at times, yes, I remember. Tell me about the media buzz that surrounded this building. I remember in particular, right at the, towards the end of the uh, construction period before the opening, one of the reporters said, how did he know that the acoustics were going to work? When at that point, the net, the Jack Forrest, the junior partner, said, uh, we do know because we've fired a gun. Now that's a headline. <laughs> And so uh, they began to, it seemed to, with one voice, all clamour for a reenactment of this firing a gun. And so I had the extremely embarrassing task of ringing the police and saying, could I borrow a revolver for half an hour, please? Um, but that was in all the broadsheets at the time. And uh, my father opened his paper, which had this picture of me firing a, a revolver. But the headline in his newspaper said, architect shot in cathedral and apparently he fell off, off the seat in the train at the time. I bet he did. <laughs> the architect spoke in a new language, but this is genuine art. What for you were some of the special moments during this whole process? One particularly special moment was the day before the actual opening. I had been told that there was going to be a private service of consecration and it wasn't necessary for any of the workmen to stop whatever they were doing. And about two o'clock in the afternoon, I remember hearing this singing. I don't think in the whole of my life I've experienced anything as profound as what happened then. Without exception, every man seemed to go and sit down, the crash hats came off, and this intense change came over the building. It stopped being a building and it became a sacred place. And it, it affected me so much that I just cried away. It was a, a wonderful, wonderful experience.
Winifred Park has lived in Liverpool her whole life and witnessed the long struggle to build Liverpool's Metropolitan Cathedral. She has vivid memories of the celebrations 50 years ago on Pentecost Sunday. Now here comes the procession with the Cardinal Legate. Well, I went to the consecration. There were nearly 3,000 people in, in the cathedral. And the organ, this brand new organ with the trumpets, was playing for the first time. And it was all joyful and uplifting because at long last we had our cathedral after having over nearly 100 years of waiting. You go through the doors and you go, wow. You, you are met with this huge open space, unsupported, and your eyes are automatically are drawn to the lantern tower, so you look up. It's not stained glass, it's coloured pieces of glass, which are very intense and deep, representing all the beauties of God's nature. That looking up is almost a prayer in itself. When, when the cathedral was opened, it was absolutely bare. There wasn't a single solitary embellishment in it. And the, gradually over the years, the needlework department contributed the hangings, the sculptors and contributed the stations of the cross, and so much of it is local work. I didn't realise how marvellous it was going to be and how it, over the years it would go on uh, developing as the way it has done. It's a great joy and privilege to have that as my parish church.